Hello, it's Jason Payne for Cold Banker, Dean Hop Realtors. Welcome to the first video I'm doing in my home office here in Church, Texas. Now, please don't beat the beat me up too much on the format. I'm using Zoom, so that's just because that's what I know. If you've got any recommendations on a different platform I should use to do some home video, podcast, vlogging, whatever you want to call this, please let me know. Well, the reason I'm doing this video, though, is because today is 10 March 2022, marking the two-year anniversary from when the world pretty much shut down thanks to COVID. And luckily, the world's finally getting back to normal. Well, one thing that hasn't gotten back to normal is our housing prices. Man, things have changed a lot here in Texas. Um, the best way I could describe it is Texas has shifted from a local market, which has traditionally been a pretty inexpensive place to buy a house, to more of a national market because the world's been moving to Texas for two years. And that has definitely driven up our prices. Um, when COVID happened, believe it or not, some states did some stuff that really ticked off their residents. Surprise, surprise. So they started moving to places like Idaho, Texas, and Florida, really pushing up the demand for housing, but the supply was still the same. So of course, prices have gone up. I got a chart to kind of show you just what's happened in the last two years in Texas. Let me share my screen real quick. All right, take a look at this chart. And I always tell people Texas is the mutual funds of housing markets, slow and steady, not some roller coaster market like you would see in the West Coast. Even in 2008, when the big housing crash happened, man, we didn't took, take too big of a hit. And Lordy, did we bounce back pretty quick. And uh, on average, we're usually looking at 5.2% increases per month or per year. But man, look at what happened in 2020 especially the second half of 2020. Um, in November, the floodgates opened, the world started moving here, and we did a whole year's worth of business in just that last quarter of the year. And in 2021, it just kept on going. But uh, I want to break it down a little more. There, I think there's a difference between pre-existing homes and new construction, because with pre-existing homes, you really only had the supply and demand factor. A lot of people moving here, not a lot of houses to sell them, push prices up. When it comes to new construction, there's definitely been a few more factors to add into it, particularly the cost of materials to build a home. Everyone saw in the news that the cost of lumber has gone nuts. Well, it goes up and down. Um, but crazy enough, when lumber prices drop, builders aren't dropping their prices just yet. However, there's been other costs that have definitely added to materials, as in like windows, garage doors, uh, appliances, all of that stuff has gone up. Another factor you've got to consider is the trades. Um, the workers who are building these houses have realized that they've really got the builders where they want them because there's so many houses that need to get built and only a limited pool of people who know how to do these trades. So they've been demanding a lot more pay or they're jumping ship and going to another builder who's willing to pay them. And then the first builder is having to call those same guys back and say, yes, we will pay you more to jump ship from that builder and come back to us. So this back and forth, the trades have definitely been paid very well the last two years and builders aren't building homes to break even they're trying to make a little profit too. So they are passing those costs on to us, the consumers. So I would say if you're looking at just straight pre-existing homes, instead of the 30% that we've seen the last two years overall, I think pre-existing homes have probably gone up 20% and new construction ball parking has probably gone up 40%. Got one more slide I definitely want to show you. I'm not going to take too much more of your time. Don't worry. Here we go. All right. The reason I want to show this is kind of, we're definitely in a scarcity problem. This far column over here shows 
months of inventory. Now, what that means is if no new homes came on the market, how long would it take to sell everything we have on the market? Uh, so let's go to March 2020. We had 2.3 months of homes on the market. So like I said, if nothing new came on, how long would it take to sell out? Well, remember I mentioned earlier that the floodgates really opened in November 2020. We jumped from 2.2 to 1.9. So less than two months of inventory, a month and a half, down to one month. And here's where the frenzy really kicked in. Spring of 2021, it was just bonkers. At that time, I had a mantra of no days off because just trying to keep up, it was crazy. Uh, you guys definitely have been moving to Texas, and I appreciate that. Keeping me busy. I've won a couple of awards back behind me because I've been so busy. And so thank you for that. And keep keep me busy. I'm uh, My business is growing. But it's not about me. It's about getting information to you. Um, we slowed down a little bit in uh, August. When I say slow down, I mean not this crazy frenzy. A uh, few house, few more homes were able to come on the market, but this winter, boom, we're back to frenzy, and we don't have the stats for this spring just yet. But I guarantee you, we are probably less than one month still, maybe half a month because it's bonkers out there. Um, another chart I want to show you: this column going back to March 2020. This is the average prices of homes sold, meaning new construction, pre-existing homes, big homes, little homes, new homes, old homes, everything lumped in one pile. The average overall was about 264,000. Fast forward two years, we are now looking at 393. Guys, that's a hundred, just over a $130,000 bump in just two years. That's insane but that's the reality of where we're at right now. So I want you to understand that if you're watching a video that I did two years ago, particularly uh, some of these custom home builders, because yes, they do beat me up and say, uh, Jason, you need to tell these folks that our prices have changed because they're coming in and saying some bald guy on the internet told us that you can build us a house for $150 to $180 a square foot. That was true two years ago. But as I just showed you, our prices have definitely changed. So realize what our market is now. And I wouldn't be doing my job as a real estate agent if I didn't set those proper expectations. I love it here. I'm prior military. I've traveled the world. This is where I wanted to settle down. I love the people, the things to do, the schools. Um, there's, well, I don't need, y'all see my videos. Y'all know I absolutely love living here. And if you're considering moving here, uh, this is still a great place to be. It's just not as inexpensive as it was just two years ago. I want you to have that expectations. Anyways, if you found this video informative at all, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, keep sharing my videos with your friends and family. And if you are still wanting to move here, or if you're considering selling a house in the area, I'd love to help you out. Or someone, one of my uh, preferred realtors, if I get too, too busy, uh, they can help you out as well. But um, the best way to reach out to me is to click my calendar app that's going to be in the description box that we can schedule some time meet and I'll be happy to help. Anyways, like I said, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, blah, 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 all that good stuff. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care now. Bye.